Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast. This week is the Commander Shark Tank. Each of us are going to come up to the rest of the group, and we're going to pitch them uh, a Commander card that we think is amazing, and that they would be fools, fools not to run. And then the other three people at the table will decide whether or not they've been sold on this card, and will try it in future Commander games. So each of the each of the presentations, each of the card pitches, is going to be only one minute to pitch the card and reasons why you should be running this card, and then to debate and choose whether or not the rest of us are going to actually run the card if we've been convinced by the product, by the pitch, uh, it's only uh, four minutes. So it's going to be some pretty fast uh, discussions, and we're going to each have three of them, so it's going to be 12 total. And joining me for this discussion, as always, is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How's it going, Seth? I am doing great, Tomer. I'm excited. About, I was actually like up first thing this morning, coming up with personalized arguments for all of you. I'm selling y'all on my cards. I'm going to win this. I'm going to win this. I'm going to take home the million dollars and uh, and retire. You certainly <laughs> sound like the most prepared. I Retiring to your golden yacht. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is it? This is where all your what a crucible of the spirit dragons are. Like you're retiring. Maybe that's going to be I, your card. I wouldn't even. You. I wouldn't even try to sell people on crucible of the spirit dragons. <laughs> How many copies do you have still? I I, oh, I, I did a giveaway. I gave them. All, I signed them and gave them all away to Twitch chat. So they're gone. Right. I don't have to think <laughs> about it anymore. So you, got, you got some value out of them at least. All right. Cool. Um, and then other joining, blah, other people who are joining me, other peoples, uh, is, is, is Krim, aka the Asian Adventure. How's it going, Krim? That's me. Hi. Nice. I have, I have cards I would like to sell to you. Yes. I too, I feel like I am going to take home the million dollars <laughs> and then inherit Seth's golden yacht that has managed to stay afloat in water, <laughs> although being made of entirely gold. <laughs> All right. That's, that's some high confidence. I like that from our contestants. Um, Phil, aka Bruce Kitchen, do you have the same level of co- confidence that you're going to win uh, the hearts and minds of your fellow sure. Shark Tank people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so like, I got, <laughs> Yeah. One, yeah, one card is kind of. Yeah, yeah, let's see. <laughs> I got Isn't some it always that cards. person though that goes onto the game show? They're like, I don't know how I got here. I'm just happy to be invited. That's the strat. You gotta be yeah, humble. You gotta be humble. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I'm. I don't know if I'm gonna win your hearts, but I know I'm gonna win the viewers because I have some some bold suggestions here uh, that I feel are just ahead of their time. So maybe maybe you won't buy in. But uh, I think the viewers will mm-hmm. look back and they'll be like, "Ah, that's oh, why Seth. this card is now ahead a staple of, in Commander." Ahead of our, ahead of their time. Seth, yeah, you don't also have Circle of Loyalty on there, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no. Thankfully, I, I've assumed you would have it, and I didn't want to duplicate. Right. So right. yeah. <laughs> oh, we, we don't even. We don't. Oh, even, awkward. Uh, me too. <laughs> we don't know what cards everybody picked. By the way, we did not. Uh, share that information so there might be some overlap each of us picked four cards just in case um so it's gonna be a nice little surprise um but yeah with with that all uh settled uh before we begin a couple reminders if you want to support the channel you can do so two different ways first uh you can head on over to mggoldfishmerch.com and you can purchase deck boxes deck sleeves t-shirts and so much more from our own merch store and it really helps us out that way another way you can help us out is you can like and subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast be it youtube spotify itunes wherever you're listening to it give it a like give it a subscribe it helps the channel grow as well all right our first contestant, the very first card, Seth, you have the honor to step to the, I never watched the show, Shark Tank, <laughs> you step into the shark pool or, yeah. or something, I don't know. Close enough, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Join the, come to the Shark Tank and uh, give us meats, baits, I don't know, card. Yeah. Tell give us, us card. meats. Okay. You have okay. one minute. The clock minute. starts now. Okay, so I'm going to tell you why you should be playing more the Celestis in Commander. I know three mana mana value rocks are kind of on the outs, but this one has a huge upside. It's going to loot a bunch of times and gain you a bunch of life throughout the game just for doing nothing. So even though it costs three and it only adds one, this one is worth playing. If you're playing like Shieldred and care about card draw or reanimator, yeah, it gets even better, but you should just play this in every single deck. So I know you, Phil, you love your value. Are you really going to pass up the value of looting for free every game? 
game. Tomer, I know you don't like three mana value rocks, but you like Commander Sphere. This is better than Commander Sphere. It's going to loot for free a bunch of times, and you don't even have to sack it. And Krim, you're always stuck on three lands. You know what's going to help you get out of that land screw? Being able to loot for free a bunch of times with uh, your already pretty much on curve three mana value rocks. So, 10 second warning. I'm selling you on the Celestis. You should play it in pretty much all your decks. It is that good. My God, Bravo, you and you had that. four <laughs> seconds to spare as well. Uh, Sharks, what do you think about this card? Uh, so, like, Celestis is the... Is is I would say high up there compared to other three mana mana rocks, right? Like it, it it's doing things. I I just I don't know if I can get behind introducing day and night into a game because that's one of the more like actually you know I can I can it's Wait, pretty funny on its own. It is fun, like it is funny, and I'll admit that. However, is it is it good enough? Like like I like the looting, I but. I don't know. I feel like three mana mana rock, and it kind of still has to do a little bit more, doesn't it? Although I do like looting. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you Actually, do. Actually, I whenever I play Celestis, I'm like pleasantly surprised, and I never play it even in like one v one. So oh, I love it. Yeah, as long as you. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is very good. Uh, three mana. I mean, I play three mana rocks, so. Yeah, the day and night. I mean, you could just forget about it in paper and yeah. nobody will notice. So I guess that's not even... <laughs> I, mean, I'll, I'll I can't notice. remember one game where we <laughs> tracked day and night for the rest of the game yeah. when anything left the battlefield. So, yeah, good pitch. Wow. <laughs> that, <laughs> so really you're in. <laughs> All right, well, I have a lot of experience with Celestis because I also really like this card. I've played it a decent amount on online, and I have played it a little bit in paper. I had it in my Tashiro deck. Uh, I had the day and night mechanic still in my tribal tribal deck because uh, Tovalar is just that good. And I recently had it in my Myra deck uh, that uh, I played last week. And each time, it always blows me away how many times it actually flips. Like, people will just pass. You know, they'll be Drago or whatever, and they want to keep up stuff, and they don't want to cast on their turn. And that flips it. Or if you're a Drago deck, even better, then you can have it flip easily. So I I think I looted, like, four or five times in that game um, and gained life, and, and, and it was great. The only thing is, and I took it out of my paper card, uh, paper deck, I do not like the day and night. I do not like tracking day and night. It's not fun to track, and then when it's gone, you still have to track it, because who knows, if you play another day or night card, it could be Revelon. So, you have sold me on Magic Online. On Magic Online, I should play it more, and I will play it more. You did not sell me out on paper, though. I will, I refuse. I took it out of all my decks. That that is fair. I, I'm coming at it very much from the Magic Online perspective because that's where I've played it most. I think the criticism of day and night's annoying to track. That I will I will accept that. That is a legitimate reason. What about the rest of you? Did I sell you, Krim or Phil? Eh, eh, eh. Phil said he's in, right? I I think Phil? I'm in. I, I I think I'm in. Hey. I think I'm in. Give me that. If I give me that. If money. I need something in my graveyard, in. I, I hope I think button. about putting. <laughs> yeah. I, I could, uh, like, for some decks, it's it's probably actually the correct call. I hope I don't forget it, though. Like, that's <laughs> a typical card that I forget if I think... If I want to play, like, Reanimator, it, sh it should be in the deck, I think. I might forget it, but I hope I'm not. You kind of sold me there, yeah. I I, 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 I think... Played, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I like the... the just free, like, okay, I could sit here, I just draw a card, you cast two spells, this flips, I draw a card. Like, it flipping. Also, the fact that I can very easily just say after it gets blown up, I have no other day and night cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah like, so right. in paper, <laughs> it's like after that point, who cares, right? Because if what if, if you reanimate it, though? Then, then okay. <laughs> then we'll treat it as whatever it wants to be. But for, for right then and there, I think that like the day and night, for the most part, I can shortcut it in paper. Uh, and I, I don't know. I mean, I do like just the troll mechanic of bringing in day and night anyway. So, so actually, all you had to say, Seth, was that it trolls the table. It troll, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I so, will, I will take yes it. for me, yes for Krim, <laughs> Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Will you try more? I hope all so. Right. It's a classic I, card that I forget about because I think of it as a standard card. So we'll see if I think about it in Commander. It's only like the hundred and like third card for me. We're out of time. <laughs> on, on to the, I made okay. it to the next round. I on, to on to the, the next, next one. Round, Three yeses. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Jesus. What's that? <laughs>
I forgot Tomer to broke his buzzer. <laughs> Tomer broke his buzzer. <laughs> that just scared me. All right. Uh, Krim, uh, you are next. I will give you a five-second countdown. You have one minute to silence on your card. Five. It's easy. Four, three, two, one, go. Very easy. It's a staple. I guarantee you, you should be playing it. It's Brotherhood's End. I still don't think it, there's enough of it. I think everyone <laughs> should play it. Uh, it's it's so good. It's just it example. It blows up a Celestis. It cleans the board of all the setup that every, all your opponents do. So, to, Phil, you love depriving Tomura of his artifacts and his lands on top of that. <laughs> so you already know this is perfect for you, Seth. You like killing cre- little rogue creatures. Why not? You pick off planeswalkers on top of that, and yeah, like you just completely body everyone's early game setup. So. Is, and it, you know what? Calder survives. There you go, Tomer. See? That's it. I don't even have to say That's more so than that. This is just Calder survives it. There you go. This is a red staple. It does everything I want it to do always at every phase of the game. It always does a little bit of something. All right. Stopping the timer. Well, I will say, when you mentioned this card, I looked it up on EDH Rec, and I was shocked that it's only in 1% of decks. So apparently this hasn't really caught on yet and people aren't playing it. I do think it's a good card, although I recently heard, Krim, and I'd like to hear your response to this. I heard the Mana Rocks are a scam. If the upside of this is blowing up Mana Rocks, is that really that good if they're a scam? How do you respond to that? (laughs) Well, you know what? This just puts you ahead of the curve because you see you already know they're a scam, so you don't need to buy into it, but you know others are. So you can punish them doubly. They're already buying into the scam, and you're going to dunk them on their scam on top of that. Ooh, okay, okay, that's that's a good answer. I mean, normally I'm skeptical of cards like this. Only three damage, doesn't get big creatures, but the blowing up of the artifacts, I think that sells me. I'm I'm in. I'm in on more brothers on brotherhood end. I'm i I'm I'm still I don't know. Like, yes, like it's like a board wipe, right? Like if you are in a deck, you should still have a board wipe, even if you run creatures, right? Like even if your own creatures die you should still have a borrow because there's going to be situations where you're not you don't have a lot of creatures on the battlefield or somebody stopped you and you have you just have to you have to wipe the board and you have to get, catch up that way like it's always still going to be good to have that said red does have like vandal blast and stuff like i don't have to blow up my own stuff i like the flexibility i like that you can blow up small creatures or all artifacts just for three mana it's going to be either way it's more mana efficient than vandal blast however i like i play a lot of artifact decks Krim. i don't mm. like blowing up my own stuff but calder survives calder does survive I, but all my that's sickness that's the only artifact dying. you play tomer don't lie although, although <laughs> i literally tomer, have a brutal cloud deck and i just made a myra deck and both of them get <laughs> destroyed is, by this card isn't that the faulty logic we used against farewell <laughs> though like oh no we shouldn't play yeah, this really busted card because i might blow up my own stuff Stuff. I uh, think we're falling into that same that same uh, fallacy. Uh, Which, by the way, that is a staple farewell, and just like <laughs> Brotherhood's end. Uh, Phil, what mm. do you think? Yeah, I'm kind of in the Toma camp that this wrecks a lot of my decks, which is also why I will probably never play it. My my biggest concern with it is you kind of want to be mono red, otherwise there's better refs, unless you play Is it? But in Is it, I just try to win the game. I don't do something bigger than just wrap the board on turn three or whatever. Also, in Izzet, I also play Signets. So I, I play way too many mana rocks for this. And if I want to anger off the gods, I guess I play this. I'm sure it's correct to play it, but I will just never play it. Aren't you here? The, <laughs> the reactions I've gotten from the two people that play mana rocks. That's exactly why you would want to play yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will blow me out. <laughs> it is uh, pretty good against me, probably. That's, uh, their, their reaction is selling me more. Krim, I will give you $10 for 30% of your brother's hood end. Literally ha- half my decks get wrecked by this card. Like, uh, it's, yeah, man, I mean, I should. I should run it more, but just like farewell, nobody does. <laughs> I do. I do. You should play Farewell, though. <laughs> Don't play Farewell. Don't be that person. This card, uh, come on. There ain't no way right. you're not buying. It does it all. I might, it- okay. I might, yes, but I don't know if I'll actually be running it that much. <laughs> <laughs> then you're not really a yes. <laughs> I'm not a yes. I, I know that it. it would wreck me, but I'm all probably right. the never next red play. deck. The next red deck that I run will have Brothers of Zen. Okay, how about that? Uh, okay. I'm a yes for, for one, for at least one game. <laughs> <laughs> but more Fair. than zero, all right? I was at zero, and now you got me at one. 
that's that's a, that's part of a win yeah that, that counts let it be I mean, known imagine if- listeners and viewers it's a yes it, it's a no from them but that's a yes if you think about how good it is <laughs> oh, i'm so scared of this card all right discussion over yes is all around crim good job uh, yeah, I think, recent, I'm not. I, yes, I think no, Phil, no. Phil, well, Phil's not a yes. Phil's no. a no. Yeah, yeah. All your Which stuff is like by this. Yeah, uh, kills I the mana dorks and the probably. mana rocks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, <laughs> that is. So, <laughs> so it's we'll a yes. Two yeses and one no. Is it wait? So is it a yes? Only if you want to play it, or if you acknowledge that you should probably play it, but it doesn't fit your decks. I mean, I don't want to play it, but I'm grudgingly going to play it at least. One it's time. eat your veggies. It's an eat your veggies thing. Ah. You know you should. Ah. So, here, so here's the it. thing: uh, with like sweltering suns, you can cycle it and draw a card if you don't need it. Usually in my decks, is like it. Both sides will probably blow me out. Or the. I, I think you're just up. legitimately a no. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I guess you're so, just yeah. Like, I'm not going to run it. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I, I like ec- more expensive wraps anyways. Like, Well, if we're timing uh, the discussion, we've already went oh. way over time. So. Eh. Oh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will move on to Phil. This is going to be your first uh, card to pitch to the Shark Tank. Uh, you have one minute starting now. So here's a cool card that exists for a very, very long time and is in 0% of decks, although it is in a couple of thousand. It's just a very old card. It's Collective Restraint. Four mana, creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays X for each creature attacking you, where X is the number of basic land types you control, so pretty much domain. Um, I hate being attacked. And if you do something like Fetch a Triumph on turn one, it's already three mana for anybody to attack you for every creature, and that's nobody's ever gonna pay this, especially at a greedy tea table like ours. So if you don't want to get attacked and play like more than I play it in two color decks as well. It was my m- most played enchantment last season, and I still run it in every blue deck that plays another color as well. I just hate being attacked, and this is without build around probably the best one of those. Sphere of Safe? What's the other one that stacks with enchantment? That's probably uh, better. We are out of time. time. Yeah. Eh. Cool. <laughs> uh, I forgot this card. <laughs> I, I always forget about this card. It blows my mind that Ghostly Prison is kind of like a staple that shows up in a ton of decks, and this shows up in no decks. Yeah, it's one more mana, which is a drawback, but it can potentially be way more powerful if you're in three colors or four colors or five colors, because then your opponent's going to have to pay a prohibitively high amount to attack you. Uh, I think this card should definitely be play more. I'm the, the resident five color player, I think. I think I play the most five color decks out of everyone. And I also love to just kind of dirtle around and not impact the board immediately. And then sometimes I get punished for doing that because I don't, everyone's like, oh, I got to draw a card with my thing and I got to hit someone to do it. And then you end up being the punching bag that takes all the damage. Collective restraint seems like the perfect way to avoid being the punching bag and be able to dirtle around because no one's going to pay that mana. And even though this sounds ridiculous, I could see playing in a mono blue deck. I think even just paying one mana to attack, that's going to be enough that people aren't going to want to do it. People are not going to want to pay one for each of their creatures to attack you. So even in mono blue, I could see us, I could see an argument for playing this. So yes, uh, I, I am it's very in and, and I think I'm going to start playing this in like all my decks. I have blue mana now. Yeah. I actually already play this in my Enchantress deck, uh, or my, like, my, yeah, Olayla deck, but outside of, I don't know if I'm going all in on just pay one for attacking, right? Like, I don't know if I'm, if it, my deck plays blue, I don't know if I'm jamming this. There has to be a strong, like, enchantment synergy, uh, and, because this is still four mana, right? It doesn't exactly, like, you have Propaganda, you have Ghostly Prison, and this is more of, like, the third copy, right? And, I think the relying on the domain part is a lot, because uh, like you know, with lands getting better, you're mixing and matching your lands. Seth, MDFCs, mm. right? Like you're, you mm. are having less land types. You do need a triome, right? And and that's true. Even even in and it's getting even harder. I mean, unless you're Tomer and you play like forty two basics, right? Like <laughs> it, like you're mixing your mana base up now and ma- maximizing on the utility of all your lands. So <clears throat> over the years, this has fallen down for me. Um, I, I think I'm a no on this, sadly. This is, because propaganda exists. 
Uh, and, and they're already, like, better effects uh, and whatnot that don't rely on me having domain. Like, I'm already going through enough by committing the mana. I don't want to also have to have domain on top of that. But my four and five color decks, their mana base is fetching out triomes. Like, I'm sure if we're on a budget, maybe it doesn't work that way. But the the power level we play in Commander Clash, I'm fetching out triomes. So having the land types, that, that ain't no thing. But tell me, what, I, what do you think? I think I was, I was heavily on team... Uh, propaganda effects long ago when I started playing. And I still think they're very good at depending on the meta. Uh, but it, I think it's very meta dependent. If you're in a, if you're at tables where they're all about attacking and they also don't have a lot of enchantment removal, then these cards overperform. They basically, for one card, you're basically redirecting so much damage to other people, potentially saving your life in the game uh, for a single card. An innocuous looking card. I've seen I've seen those cards go off. However, if you're in a meta that's very combo heavy or something like that, this gives you a false sense of security where you're, you're probably just better off replacing these cards with just removal spell. Like, oh, if some people have scary board states, just wipe the board of creatures. And then you can continue to do it all that way. And you've also set back your opponents. Um, and also if people are going combo, then your your greatest threat is not being attacked. It's, it's the opponent just being allowed to do whatever they want and you're not actually having removal spells. And I think that's, that's a major trap with this one. Another problem with this is like if somebody has a lethal board state, if they have a disenchance, you're like, you you think you're safe, but <laughs> one moment you're safe, one moment you're that's, not, right? So that's why that's I, I've moved away from these type of effects, and I just went to board wipes. So <clears> also <throat> for me, that's a no. Well, and, and uh, like, to lightly add on to that, this, these effects are good if they're in multiples. Hmm. Like, you kind of have to but be a staxy mm, prison deck. I don't, I don't, so. I don't like these effects. Like this one. I, oh, that's why, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. like I these like effects... Man, right? I think that Tomer is right that just having a board wipe actually just deple- like destroying the board uh, and getting rid of the thing that's going to hit you is probably better than than a miser copy of this, right? Like, mm. <sighs> This is a board wipe that sticks around forever. If there's one thing I know about commander players, it does not take much of an incentive to get them to attack <laughs> in a different direction. And I think that this is enough of an incentive that it's going to draw the heat off of you. Like, sure, it can get blown up, but I'm, I'm still in. I think it's going to do enough... Uh, enough damage prevention to be worth it. I mean, okay. I'm still going to play it in every blue X deck, so we'll, maybe I draw it yeah. someday. <laughs> I rarely, rarely draw it, but it should I be mean, in there usually. As long as you're not take, as long as you're not using this instead of having a board wipe in your deck, like that's the major thing. Yeah. Like you should have a board press. You should have this as a supplement as ways to not die. Yep. And the other yep. ways would be have a board presence and also have removal. And if you have a healthy mix of all of them. I think you're in a much better position in most games because if one of those aspects fails, if your board gets wiped, uh, then you still have this effect. And if your your this gets blown up, then you still have the board. You still have a board presence. Or if somebody's trying to attack you with one big thing and they can get around it, then you have the removal spell. Like if you have a nice mix, I think is good. If you're going all in on these effects, I think you're you might be in trouble. Yeah, but I, I'm not good. suggesting this as the only yeah. card in your deck, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's pretty decent, just like a maybe as a one up, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm still no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I I'm still yes. <laughs> All right, that is then for the. I guess we just go over a little bit more for for over four yeah. minutes for discussion. That's fine. For the 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 pitch, we'll keep it at one. But I got a card for you. Oh boy, okay, I'm leaving, I'm not going, I'm not going super heavy on the spice right at the beginning, but I'm going to start the timer on myself right now. All right, Bolt Bend, why aren't you people running it? It is one of the best cheap cards that is amazing in red. It's one of the first cards I throw into like 90% of my decks. Bolt Bend, four mana, instant, uh, the spell costs three less to cast if you control a creature of power four or greater. So if you're in a stompy deck, or if you're in any commander that has four more power, or if you have equipment or any ways of buffing your creatures, if you just have a four power creature, it's so simple to have in commander. Then it costs one red mana at instant speed. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. This stops counter magic. Oh, you're gonna get your spell's gonna get counter. Well, one red mana bolt bend to redirect it to that. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna sort to postures one of my creatures. I'm gonna two for one you. I'm gonna redirect it, so I'm gonna stop that from affecting it, and I'm gonna blow up another threat. It could be your own stuff. It, it the disenchant. Oh, uh, you're gonna like uh, you know blue sun zenith your face or whatever the targeted version of it is. Now I'm gonna draw the cards. It's so flexible, such great protection. It's everything. Oh, blah blah blah. Great. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. All right. What do you think? 
<laughs> this so this I, is uh, after ahead, deflecting Kevin. SWAT, right? Like this yeah. is uh, so. So once you go after deflecting SWAT, I, I don't know. Like the decks that usually play this, usually have blue paired with it. So I guess I just keep a counter spell. But if you're mono red, like if you're just straight up mono red or like in gender, or some color that just doesn't have access to blue. I just is this blue ducks? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> like, but like, like, like in all, like, but like this just doesn't feel. These effects, redirect effects in general, just don't feel good to me in Commander. Like, I don't even like deflecting SWAT. Uh, it's just because I would... I know, I know, I don't even like deflecting SWAT as a card. So, not like... Yeah, like, I just don't like redirect effects because I would rather them be almost anything else. Another threat, another, like, you know... Ah, I just don't like these effects, so... I haven't been sold on redirect effects at, in general. So I think that's why I lean heavily against this. Cool, boy. I I almost feel bad about this because I've been on board with everyone's card so far, but I'm kind of with Krim. I think that, I think that, okay, hear, hear me out, hear me out. So it's absurd that this card's like free and deflecting swaps like $50. If I was going to play one of these effects, I would play Bolt Bend as a as a budget card. There's no way I'm spending fifty bucks on a deflecting swap. Right. But much like Krim, I don't really play redirect effects. I guess I could see an argument if I like was in mono red and I was a deck that really cared about my commander, I could use it as like one mana protection, which is fine, like a red counter spell. But in general, redirect effects just usually are those cards that are like the 105th card or something that just ends up getting cut, doesn't quite make it into my list. So I like the pick and I like Bolt Bend. I'm just not really a fan of redirect effects in Commander in general. But what? A, what? A, so I guess I'm a no for now. But what do you think, Phil? Yeah, I'm, so I got pretty much the same problem. It's like <coughs> sometimes I play Deflecting SWAT. I wish I played more... For example, Narset's Reversal feels the same way. It feels super clever to play with these effects and they're super... <laughs> You can do super cool and fun things with them, but I kind of always cut them. And sometimes I play with deflecting sport because, oh, it's free, it's super powerful. But as also, I mean, if you play deflecting sport, I'd probably say, oh, yeah, yeah, you got it, cool for you. Not to be salty, but if you play a uh, bolt band, I'd say, oh, that is sweet. That is such a, it's, it feels better to play bolt band, probably. So I. <laughs> Should I play it more? I always feel super clever and it's fun when you pull it off. So I should play for fun and include more of these effects. So it's a, I, it's a, I'm considering giving it a yes, Tom. Or not. Don't shake your head there. There's, I do never <laughs> like, play I mean, these effects. This was but, the best uh, card on my list. This is my I mean, safe okay. bet. It's worse okay. from here, folks. So, so why yeah, am I, mean, I committing yeah. one so I card want... spot to something that is hypothetically, that could, you know, like it, it's like this is a, oh, like, it, it the will old happen. Will card be disadvantage choice. thing, right? Like this is just like I'm throwing in essentially what is like a an unmoored ego effect, right? Like into the main deck here. I mean, well, I I'm think it's better than that. It's your it's your mono red counter spell. If you think of it that think of it that way, Krim, does that sell but, you? You're in but, mono red. You don't have access to blue cards. This lets you play your draw go game plan. Pyroblast. Mm -hmm. I would just play Pyroblast because at least that could destroy okay. a permanent that's also hit the board, right? That's blue. But, but it, it only hits a blue thing. Any yeah, it can redirect spell. Anything. I just don't like redirects. The redirects just feel like card. Like it's a hypothetical thing that <laughs> oftentimes, like I sit there and it okay. does nothing. Or, or, or when it has it an just, effect, it's like it's not enough. Two for one if it commanded protection. I feel like they are always <sighs> enough. And you find targets for it, but I just don't find room for it in my deck. It's like, That's oh so, yeah, when so this so happens, that will be enough. cool. But is it? So hmm. I'm, I'm probably gonna get it. I, no, I think I think I actually <laughs> after after hearing Phil talk about it, I think technically I should play it more because right now it's at zero. Oh yeah, it's a, it's at literally zero. <laughs> is the right number of bolt bends for me to play? Literally zero? Probably not. It might be like one a season or something, but I do think the number is probably higher than zero. So in that sense, I guess I'm a yes, I should be playing it more. At the same time, I don't think redirect effects are going to become like staples of my commander decks that I play every week. So I'm going to give it a yes, but a soft yes. Kind of like when you said you'll play one brother's hood end. I'll play one sure. bolt bend and see how it feels and then we'll go from there. <laughs> one 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 no from Krim. One yes from Phil? So, 
Oh, this got me thinking. Imagine you have a deck full of these effects and you're just waiting for your opponent to do stuff and then you control them on the stack. That would be a pretty fun deck <laughs> to play. That would be kind of funny. Hmm. So maybe I should just... I'll just give you the, the yes and say, well, I want to play more of these effects. I'll There's take multiple yes. cards that I I'll take the soft yes play. from Seth, too. No, All right, well, that was that was the only one that I was like, this is a bona fide hit. This will be an easy <laughs> win. So, oh, boy. Yo, watch out for the <laughs> last two. This is going to be rough. Um, but speaking yeah, of, uh, Seth, you have one minute to pitch us your second card right now. Oh, all right. Well, do I have a card for you? And that card is maybe my favorite commander sleeper right now, which is Hatred. Hatred essentially reads, <laughs> if there's an unblocked creature, someone gets to die on the spot. Like, sure, you got to spend a bunch of life, but that's fine. You're in black. Put it on a life linker, like Vampire Nighthawk, or maybe you're a Karak deck. You can even grow a huge creature and sack it to Disciple Abolas after you kill someone to get all that life back and draw a ton of cards. So, Phil, I'm expecting you to be the tough sell here because you don't really like killing <laughs> people. Always... If someone dies again, is gonna end and you won't get as much value but i do know you like life swapping shenanigans imagine like hatreding to get your life total down to one and then like access immortality or soul <laughs> conduit to shift it around kind. crim uh -huh. i know every time we do commander clash you cringe like i do when you have to say clash on how do you make sure you never say clash on again <laughs> you kill someone with hatred so they're the first person out you don't gotta clash on next week tomer you always try to call draw it's never enough throw the hatred on the calder <laughs> token and it might actually kill someone <laughs> That's why you should play Hatred. <laughs> okay. I agree with Seth fully, though. This card is a housing commander. It actually makes Calder look half playable. And like, what? And like, <laughs> I, this card is great, right? And it's just, it's so aggressive. The only thing that sucks is when the only, the only mark against it is when you are the punching bag all game. If you know you're the arch enemy of most pods... You probably aren't going to have that much life to work with. And I'm not going to lie to you. After being hatreded out numerous times this season by Seth, I assume as the seasons progress, Seth will have less life to work with going into future episodes. But that, outside of that, I think this card is a house. It, it does a lot. It does cost five mana. It is a lot of mana. But it's such a sweet. Like, you, even after you, I've seen it happen numerous times, it's still a fun finish. It's like a falcon punch. I love this no. thing. I think it's such a cool card. It's a yes. I died to this card. I always, oh, whenever <laughs> it happens, I just can't believe it. Oh, they have exactly hatred, and I'm dead. <laughs> I just can't put. I think I never played this card so far, but I'm always just shocked when it happens that somebody <laughs> would just give half their life just to <laughs> yank well, somebody out of the game hatred, out of right? nowhere. <laughs> it is such a wild card. I mean, this it creates funny literally bad that beat stories, so I should probably be for it, but it also just ends the game. Putting it on a lifelinker <laughs> seems sweet, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Get that life back. Phil, yeah, it's, I know you I love meme and Phil. This so is literally, times. and I took it personal. <laughs> and I took that personal. Yeah. Like, this, this is that card. I like this card a lot. Uh, yeah. I do think I, I've stayed away from it for so long because it does feel super, super <coughs> risky. It's five mana. And if your creature just gets blown up or anything before you can connect, like it feels so bad. Like you're yeah. so blown. It's like it's like playing Phage in Commander, right? Like, yeah, sometimes you'll get people with Phage, but sometimes you'll just die to it, right? So it's like high risk, high reward, but it's it works really well with Commander damage. It's different than Tain and Strike. Like, if I had something that I was already hitting for, like, 10 plus damage, I'd say, oh, just run Tain and Strike instead and infect people and you don't for one mana, and you don't have to worry about, like, killing yourself in the process. But it works so well with commanders, especially small commanders, because it doesn't really matter what power they start with, like, as long as you have X amount of life. If you're Arch Enemy, yeah, you won't have the life total, like Krim said, but if you just, I don't know, if you just throw it in as spice, I think it's pretty good to just kill somebody. It is a really stylish way of killing people, and it works so with lifelink. Like, if you can get lifelink on your commander or whatever, then even better. Uh, I'll say yes. I, ha I literally haven't played Hatred in, like, a decade, so uh, yes, I'll, I will I will try it again. Yes. I've never it's felt so, bad so dying sweet. to it. 
It's just yeah. like so <laughs> sick. It's like goddamn, dude. Because you're so that's, all in on it. It's five yeah. mana <laughs> less. You have to lose like most of your life to do this. You usually don't feel bad killing people with it either, because you know you're probably gonna die the next yeah, turn you're, because you're like almost like to. five now or something. So eh, it's yeah. fair. Maybe I should put it into Shiro again. <laughs> this is truly the just on my way man. out. Fellow, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we saw you. Yeah. So it, what, it gets got, a yes for me cells. just for style um, points. It's just nice. and putting it on a commander is actually good, especially if if it's something weird like Jadar or something that you wouldn't expect to kill you, and then oops, it's mm. all fine. It is it is pretty funny, yeah. So that's a yes. It's it's also Grim. I don't know if you already have it in there, but it seems perfect for Ramses if you're playing. Oh, the, I have it in Ramses. Okay, I okay. have it. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, you're, yeah. You're way ahead. That's oh, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's three yeses. Yeah, so that's record time decision yeah. as well. So good job, Seth. Uh, we will restart the clock. We'll give Krim. You're up next with your second card that he will pitch the Shark Tank. Uh, you will start. Your minute begins right now. Well, okay. Since we're going on a little, little bit of favorites, I'm moving this up on the list. <laughs> I've used it numerous times. Everybody expects that I have it. It's a Chroma's Will. Come and on. I've noticed, <laughs> why does no one, not like, I feel like not enough people play this. And if you have white and you have a creature in your deck, this just feels so good, right? It is just like, I'm getting through. I, unless you are a colorless deck, I'm getting through. Uh, I, I'm going to punch and I'm going to kill you usually 99% of the time. This is a hatred that won't lower my health all the way to the bottom. And I don't have to worry about the crack back because usually I will just gain... Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, this this card just does everything I want to do, and it's such a good closer. It can kill multiple people at a table. Uh, I, I just think this is a very solid combat trick. It can be, in a worst-case scenario, be used as a protection spell, but for the most part, this is a closer. This is a win con. This is a legit win condition. And gaining the lifelink, as I had mentioned. Sorry. Nice. I yeah. hate this card. I hate yeah. this card. <laughs> Every other Commander Clash, there's Krim over there like, oh, I think Seth might be dead next turn. I'm like, dude, you only have like five power worth of creatures. How am I dead? And it's always a Chrome as well. It really is Krim's, Krim's hatred. It really, yeah. it does the same thing. It just comes down out of nowhere with a not very threatening looking board and people start dying. Um, I don't play it that often. And I think... This should probably be a staple in white creature decks. Like, I, it's got to be one of the best finishers, right? It might be the best finisher in a we white creature it, deck. ranked it, like, right alongside Craterhoof. Like, it was, I think, yeah, a, just is. a little bit lower than Craterhoof. So I've always died to it rather than yeah. killing people with it. But I probably should start playing and killing people with it to uh, to even out those odds a little bit. So so I am. I'm fully in. No 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 questions on this one. There's, yes. There's no selling on me. Like, this, this is literally just yeah. one of the best finishers in Commander. Like, I think we all agree on that. But I think the only reason why I don't it. run it is, like, it's $14. I actually, yeah, I, so I run budget. I really... Usually. I do rarely play it for some reason, but I think it's the same reason I try not to play Teferi's Protection. I still do sometimes. But it's just one of these... Uh, the fact that it protects your board is so insane. And then it kills... It, it is absolutely absurd. Yeah. Can't argue I, against that. <laughs> so I gotta good. start remembering it. I think if I ever build a red deck, Jessica's Will is like one of the first cards oh, I yeah. add in every single time. I need to start thinking of Akroma's Will in the same way. It needs to be like, oh, I'm playing a white deck. Akroma's Will, yeah. first card in the deck, because I think it it really is that strong. So good reminder, Grim. So That's a good reminder. But oh, actually. I'm gonna yeah, say it, no just because I don't I'm tired of this card already. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want to play it more. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. There's no. It way is so you good. No. Teferi's protection is also so good. I'm tired but the of thing Teferi's is, this protection. This is under well. you. Like Teferi's protection definitely gets used in our group, right? Like we know yeah. that. But I feel like no one else plays a Chroma's Will. I don't e like. I don't even think I see Richard play it. It's mostly a Crim card somehow. Mm -hmm. I think I've died to it mostly from Crim. I feel like Richard, if Richard doesn't run it, he should be like this. This makes sense for Richard. Like he turns all his birds into whatever's when they can kill. It's the Slightly best. better birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Average cards. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right. I mean, yeah. Okay, it's a yes for me. But I, I mean, it's fourteen dollars, so it's like, yeah. If I'm not running a budget deck, I'll run it in white. I obviously. think that's relatively cheap for what the card is. By the way, yeah. Like, like, I think fourteen. Obviously, fourteen dollars is, is like up there when it comes to building budget decks. But I think this is. Yeah. Cheap for how good the card is. Yeah, what's what's the fairest protection? I see it's like nine percent on EDH rec. What's the fairest protection? I think it's much higher. It's the fairest protection. Like, at one point it was like seventy bucks, but it's not that anymore. It's uh, twenty percent to fairies protection. All right, so this is less than half. Yeah, as and it, it it should be very similar, I think, as far as yeah how how often they see. I mean, you play. do need creatures. You do. most decks need you can have best creatures. Case. <laughs> I, I will also yeah. say that price is a legit criticism of hatred, too, because that card's like 40 bucks. I didn't realize it was Ugh. Is it on the card. reserve list? Yeah. It is yeah. a reserve list card. I thought it was cheap because of Ooh. Magic Online, but it's not. <laughs> I feel better about dying to hatred than Crim as well, though. I'm just like, come on, again, Crim? Again? <laughs> Tell simply, me about it. <laughs> simply stop dying to it, right? Stop t- I'm sorry your stuff is indestructible protection from everything. How do you, how do you stop it? How do you stop it? You can't block it. Just die. You can redirect it, right? Do not say go. Yeah, that's Oof. where the bolt then comes in. Actually, that doesn't really work, so I don't Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right. So yeses. Grudging yeses. All right. Okay. Uh, Phil, you have your second card ready. You have one yeah. minute. Oh. I changed my order here. Okay. Um, so, wait, wait. Krim just uh, pitched uh, one of the wills. I'm gonna give yeah, you. The, I'm gonna give you a countdown. It's okay. Uh, one uh, minute. Okay. Commercial break. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, this was my third card, but I guess now it's my second card. Uh, the black one of the will cycle starts will. Five mana instant. Choose one. If you control a commander as you cast this spell, you may choose both. First one is each opponent sacrifices a creature with power. Oh my god, this is bad on a one minute timer. <laughs> Everybody sac- <laughs> Every opponent it. sacrifices the creature with the greatest power they control. And the second mode <laughs> is exile all cards from all graveyards. Then create X01 black thrall <laughs> creature tokens where X is the greatest power among creatures. Exile warning. this way. Half a minute left. Uh, you want uh, board control and remove the biggest thing, even with indestructible. And then you want graveyard hate and you even get a big board back at instant speed. Uh, to be fair, the board is just 01 thralls. But still, it's sacrifice fodder, it's permanence, it is a lot of value and some utility with graveyard hate. It's a good card. Play it more often, I guess. <laughs> nice. Yes. I, yes. I don't know about <clears throat> that presentation. A, Half that presentation yeah, the, was just the, re- man, yeah, the reading uh, of the yeah, text yeah, boxes. Hard, but I guess that's Wizard's <laughs> fault, really. So The, the presentation <laughs> definitely leaves a little bit desired, but the card <laughs> itself is a yes. The card is snappy. The will cycle, I think, is something that is all, like, I think in general is just really good, and the black one is just as sweet. Maybe maybe not as much of a closer as a Chroma's will, and obviously not as much of a boost as <coughs> Jessica's, but it is good in its own right. I have used it in a good amount of my black decks. Love the graveyard hate added on top of it, uh, which is always good in every deck. It's it's exactly what I want. It's exactly it's It's an edict effect. You know I love my edicts, and you know it's a good edict because it hits the highest power, and it gives you the bodies to follow up with it. I I love this. I love this card. It is a bit co- a gra- like a bit heavy on the cost at five mm. mana. That's the only thing I don't like about it. But for the most part, I like this card. Sats will yes for me. Oh, so I'm a big believer in incidental graveyard hate showing up on cards that do other things. I think we need more of those cards. But this one's a tough sell for me. Five mana for an edict, even one that gets everyone's best creature. That's a lot. And then the tokens have zero power. So unless you're like a sack deck, what are you really going to do with them? Just chump lock for a while. So oh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you, you, what do you think? Dirtling, right? I, I do love dirtling, but I don't know if this is efficient enough to help me dirtle. If I'm spending five mana on an edict and some zero ones, is that is that going to really keep me alive to dirtle around? Yes. <laughs> yes. I think. Yeah. So like soul shatter is same does the same thing. Each Three opponent mana. sacrifices a creature with the greatest power. So if you want just that effect, you can do it for three instead of five in black. If you want to do that plus exile stuff to make thralls, 
then I think it gets a lot better. Like if I'm in a sacrifice deck, for example, I want to have a lot of fodder. And this is going to be better than Soul Shatter for me because it does put a lot of bodies on the battlefield that I can then sacrifice for value. I can put Skull Clamp on or whatever. So in the context of a sacrifice deck, I like it more. If I just want to get rid of creatures, though, I probably will run Soul Shatter. If I want to do both, then maybe. But like it just feels like I like the fact that it does both. But I don't know if I want to spend five mana for both. So... So me. it's also the black is so good at getting rid of creatures. Like you, you have like the def- not deflecting swap, but you have the the free mana spell version of that. You have snuff out. You have like all like the two mana kill spells and stuff like that. So there's like just so much fighting for that spot that for five, it's like wow. I don't know. I'm not. Sorry. I it does I just, a lot. A lot. I, I like it if you can use the flows. Again, if you look at it like a command or a charm, it doesn't do, like, like, there's always going to be a better rate on the effect, but it's the fact that Mm -hmm. it does all of it at once, and the versatility, it's a nice card. Come on. (laughs) I just looked at my my stats. I've never put this card in a deck. Uh, It is is literally 0% of my commander decks. I think it maybe should be more than that. I, I do like the idea of insect decks. If you have a way to take advantage of those thrall tokens, mm-hmm. then I think it's probably pretty good. But I think at five mana, it's a little too much for me to just like jam this in most decks. So maybe it's like a very soft yes that I should probably play it a little more than I do, but I'm not sold on this being a, a card that I should jam very often. I'm going to say soft yes. I'm going to put it in my next black deck and I'll see how it goes. Ooh. Hopefully I can draw it. Hmm. Don't you play it in Tishy Raw? It's an instant. Yeah, but I actually like having my opponents having stuff in their graveyard. Oh, you don't want to exile the graveyard? Yeah, I don't want to exile the graveyards. The other other thing I don't like about it is I feel like Wizards is printing more of these incidental graveyard hate cards. So I feel like this is just going to get out of class pretty quickly. We just keep getting more and more of things that are like, oh, accidentally exile the graveyard. Like Callous Blood Mage, a bunch of the Warhammer pre-con cards are just like, hey, do a thing and exile the graveyard. So I don't know. I feel like this is slowly going down in value for me rather than increasing because we're getting more options to exile the graveyard that are playable i think it still does all relevant things but yeah it is a lot but so if you can take advantage of everything then yes but i don't know i'm gonna try it anyway i'll try it anyway soft yes and crim's a hard yes yeah i'm a yes i'm a a yes you know know, know, crim's all in i love this card so soft yeses and a hard hard yes for for Phil on Zat's will. All right, uh, who's it on? I think it's me. It's you. Oh, are you Sell ready for this? this? Are oh, you ready for this? We're so are you ready, ready for the spice. Vault Bend was your most agreeable. Okay. That was, was my was most agreeable. agreeable. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Okay, I'm putting start on that the timer. Clock. Starting now, Yasharn Implacable Earth. This is a four mana Selesnya elemental board, the best board. When it ETBs, you get to search your library for a basic force and the basic planes card, put them into your hands, and then players can't play life or sacrifice non land permits to cast spells or activate abilities. This shuts down fetch lands. This shuts down like freaking treasures. This shuts down. Uh, any life, paying life stuff, like any, any incidental black cards that require you to pay life to do anything. The biggest thing is the shutting down, like, treasures and fetch lands is huge. And it is always going to be, like, a three for one because it fetches two lands and puts them into your hand. No, it's, it doesn't straight up draw cards, but it will get you a planes and a forest each time, puts it in your hand. It's a four four boar, easily recurrable. It's just a big old piggy. And I will say even this. No, oh, is there just basics? Run more basics. That should have been that should have been number one, but I was a coward and I didn't have enough time to, to explain that it was only one minute. There I go. Run your sharn. Bah! Hate hate bacon is hate bacon. is already a yes for me. I mean, I fully agree with, with Tomer on this. This I mean outside of the run like thirty two basics thing. Uh <laughs> like I think this card is very good. Um, I play. It, you've seen me play it on Commander Clash. This is a solid card. It's if you're in Celestia, it's just a good body, and it's shutting down everything that just continue. Like everything now, just if if it looks a certain direction, it makes a treasure, right? Like it it doesn't matter. Everything makes a treasure, and this stops that. And you really do body a lot of the pay life spells, which is pretty good. So I like Yasharn a lot. I think it's a solid hate bore. Uh, like hate bacon, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. This card is sweet. It does it does work in commander. 
So my only concern is I'm not the biggest believer in basic lands. I need room for my MDFCs. So do yeah. I really want to make sure I have enough basic forests and basic plains? That said, I think it's worth it. Like, it's a 4-mana 4-4. It hates on a ton of relevant things. And it technically draws two cards when it enters the battlefield. So I think this card is actually kind of absurd. So I'm actually a yes. I'm a little nervous as there's going to be times where I'm only going to get one land with it because I just don't have enough basics in my deck. But even with that in mind... I think I should just jam this all the time because treasures are everywhere right now. And I think it goes up even further in value if you're a budget deck fighting against non-budget decks because then you're hating on people's fetch lands and some of the most powerful non-budget cards in the format. So I like it. I think this is a, is a good one. Yeah, it's it's, Better than Bolt it's a for yes sure. for me. <laughs> uh, so the problem with this card is it absolutely wrecks me if I play Lonis and I... Oh. I play Lonis in Historic Brawl as well a lot, so I run into a lot of Yashan. Yeah, I just have I I have to deal with this, and a lot of decks are like this. Like, yeah, fetches don't work anymore. Uh, even Gilded Goose can sacrifice the nothing. It's such it is very good. If you don't want to fetch or use treasures, uh, use this. It is just worth it, and it's on such a great body four mana four four that draws two cards technically. Uh, man. Yeah, that's a yes. I should play it. It wrecks my decks, though. Oh, my God. Every, everything wrecks field decks, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, ben, I, I said the same about uh, Brotherhood's End, but this one is, yeah. like, the rate is just so good. The, the fail case is, oh, I got a 4 mana 4-4 four, four, and have two lands. Uh, when it dies, yeah. you go up two lands. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, All a, right. that's a very good call. I like it. <laughs> Easy three three yeses. I'm a little bit shocked because I, I was trying to do I was trying to do a long thing about basics, but then I saw that um, how much time I had to work with, so I just went with Fusharn. All right, <laughs> sweet. That uh, was way right. more agreeable than Bolt Bend. <laughs> I know, and even though you get major pushback for for the basics, like how dare I? There's no basics to fetch in my deck. How dare I? <laughs> the thing is, even if you can't get a basic, it's still a pretty good card. Yeah, like I would obviously play as you need to be able to get basics, but if I run out of basics, I'm not. Gonna gonna be sad that i have you sharn unlike yeah. a cultivator of ours like what a rampant growth or something if those cards can't get a land they do literally nothing you're still gonna four four that's taxing and like disrupting people so so that's yeah. why i didn't push back too hard even though i don't play that many basics but I, if i whiff with it sometimes i'm kind of okay with it like i played this in like historic decks or pioneer decks where you have like mm. one of each basic God, and you're like this... hoping that you get some cards off of it but if you don't yeah like, oh, okay like i still got a yusharn so totally it worth destroys it destroys <laughs> cat oven Oh my god. I yep. love that. Yes, it does. Unless they kill it, then then you're dead. <laughs> All right, I'm glad. Then we go to our final round. Uh Seth, you have one minute to pitch your final card. You can start now. So lands keep getting more and more powerful in Commander. Field of the Dead, Castles, Cabal Coffers, Reliquary Tower, Urza Saga, Academy Ruins, Nykthos. There are so many of these busted lands. And there's a taboo in Commander. You're not allowed to blow up everyone's lands. You can't play in Armageddon. So I'm here to sell you on playing Strip Mine. I know people do it on occasion, but you should be playing Strip Mine in literally every single deck because you don't want to be losing to those busted utility lands that Wizards keeps printing more of set by set. Phil, you love stealing people's permanents. That's like your favorite thing to do. To the point where now we all play Homeward Path specifically to metagame against you. You know what you do about that? Just strip mine it. You can strip mine the Homeward Path. Krim, you love trolling people. What's more trolly than blowing up a bounce land for no reason? You don't need to. It's not even correct, but just do it anyway. That's what strip mines lets you do. And Tomer, you're on the receiving end of the most infamous strip mine in the history of Commander Clash. How are you ever going to get revenge without playing strip mine of your own? So that's it. Play more strip mines. All right, you, you you won me over with that last <laughs> last few words. That's true. I need to start running uh, through mine commandeer in all my decks just in case, <laughs> just to get your revenge, <laughs> just to get it. You know, Seth, I I've been on board with you for a good amount of the cards you've mentioned, and I love trolling. I do love trolling, but like this is just I'm already down enough lands. I can't get past the third one. <laughs> Right, like, like, what? Like what if one of, of his lands? <laughs> this is but, like already. 
That's what I was going to say. I think yeah, I, I actually yes. like Demolition Field a lot more than Strip Mine these days. It costs two to activate, which kind of sucks. Strip Mine costs zero to activate. It just taps itself. But Demolition Field, it doesn't put you down a lane. It replaces it. It says, okay, it's pace two, tap, sacrifice Demolition Field, destroy target non basic lane and opponent controls. That lane's controller may search your library for a basic lane card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. And you may search your library for a basic lane card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So neither of you go, go down a lane. So you are not down land in comparison to the rest of the table. With Strip Mine, you do go down a land in comparison to two people at the table. So I actually like that, but it does cost you more mana, and you can't like strip mine lock people out of it with demolition field. But I Your guess your opponent if doesn't even... go down a land either, right? With yeah, unless with unless you don't okay. have any basics, unless I'm hitting like you know <laughs> Seth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is still a yes for me, but dem- I wanted to mention uh, demolition field, but I will never say no to a strip mine. It's just. The psychological control you have over your opponent, if they have a bounce land, you're just like, oh, what am I going to use this strip mine for? Mm. And it's just a good thing to have. And it's not that punishing unless you play three or more colors. Uh, in three, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, Demolition Field has the same problem there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's it is, it's always uh, will be a yes. It's just too cool to troll people with. And if you, can, oh, if you have a, a Crucible, then it's wild, yeah. Yeah. More than three, I, I would not run it. I forgot to mention that I'm tracking whoever votes yes on this. And if you vote against <laughs> me, you're going to be targeted with the next triple oh. I draw on Commander Clash. So, Krim and Tomer, uh, sorry. <laughs> I want revenge. I said I said I, I will run Strip Mine, but I just think that most oh. feel is better these days. Okay. Well, then, I but I, I will, the I will commandeer mine. strip mine. <laughs> Did I that say that? My, I mean, I goal. love strip mine. I love strip mine. It's my favorite card. <laughs> the only sad thing is, Mana Crypt is now banned at our table, so we can't. I can't get the actual dream back oh. against you. But I'll whatever. You'll have like a mind stone or something, or we might. I don't know. Have a to Celestis. unban it just so so you can have your opportunity at revenge. That would I'll commandeer your Celestis <laughs> and then strip mine you. How about that? My Hedron Archive. <laughs> Your key. No, I'll let you have that. <laughs> That's punishment enough. <laughs> All right, sweet. Um, cool. We will move on to Krim. Your third card. You have one minute starting now. Well, it seems like I'm going to need this card to protect myself from a strip mine. And so it's Urtai Resurrected. This card is flash, and it has the ability to counter a spell, activate ability, or it's triggered it. ability, and it draws the controller card. It also destroys a creature, Planeswalker, same thing. This is very good. I think that Venser was once hailed as one of like the most powerful, like one of, a very powerful blue creature, right? This is, I think, not going to directly do what Venser does. You can't like write of replication this, but you are able to like counter some pretty key things activations and at in commander where you're drawing lots of cards like that this is the same as arcane denial i'm okay with you drawing cards because they're not going to be as powerful as the thing i'm trying to counter or the ability i'm trying to counter this card is in 0.012 percent of decks this should be way higher it does so much and it is such a powerful powerful ability and is so versatile okay hmm hmm so I do like the flexibility. I think that's that's definitely a huge upside. Between those two abilities, it deals with pretty much anything. Spells, planeswalkers, creature, even triggered abilities. Mm-hmm. But we all know that the real winner of a commander game is whoever draws the most cards. <laughs> Unlike Arcane Denial, you're not also drawing a card. I can kind of write off our I actually I'm I don't play Arcane Denial either. You got a body. At least Arcane Denial, like your opponent gets two, you get one. You kind of can justify that. In this case, I guess you get the body, and you can blink the body, which is powerful. Like, that's an upside that you can keep reusing this. You can reanimate it, you can return it to your hand. There's a lot here. Uh, Okay. Okay, the flexibility. I think the flexibility is enough. I'm a little skeptical of cards that give my opponent a card, but there's enough flexibility here between blinking and reanimation and its triggers and flash that I should probably play it more. I I like it. I think four mana is a lot to have up so i think it fits best in a drago deck but it's also a wizard so i can see it being useful in anala if you have any ways of bouncing it to hand it's it becomes even yeah way better like a crystal crystal wand or whatever that you can bounce it back to hand 
Ghost, ghostly flicker effects. Yeah, like in, in Drago, I think this is, this is really good. And I don't really care about giving my opponent a card afterwards because I traded... I, I got... I countered the, the important thing and they'll just draw a random card instead. But, I mean, it's a worthy trade for me. I will say, though, I think for most decks, like, a four mana is just a lot to keep up. So I would more likely run Tails End, which is kind of similar. Two mana uh, instant, blue instant, uh, counter target, activated ability, triggered ability, or a legendary spell. Not quite the same as Urtai, but it kind of fulfills a similar role where it has that stifle effect. And this can... Uh, 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 counter legendary spells and nine times out of ten that means somebody's commander or just a legendary creature so instead of destroying so it's not quite the same thing but i think it's a little bit easier to hold up for non-drago decks but i think the synergies in urtai makes it a yes for me like if i'm running a drago deck i'm going to definitely be running urtai i think this is a really cool one that i just forgot about so i don't play that much standard these days and uh if you're like in a wizard deck or something anything that can blink it i think it becomes really really good i think so in a Tomer, to, to answer some of your concerns, like, you don't have to play it as a draw-go card, right? Raffinus Chupacabra actually, like, sees yeah. twice as much play as Urtai does, and that's just, uh -huh. like, sorcery speed. It only hits a creature. So I feel like maybe if you don't focus on leaving it up and think of it like a Ravenous Chupacabra with the upside, that if in the late game you can leave it up, I think that makes it look even better a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm. It also hits mm -hmm. Planeswalkers. And Chupacabra yeah, doesn't, that's but true. Chupacabra doesn't draw your opponent card, but yeah. and Tails End really doesn't counter, doesn't deal with something on the board. Yes, you have to have it the man up. It does counter Urtai though. <laughs> Unsold. Counter Urtai. Tails End. OG. Got him. <laughs> you sold me got on him. Tails End, Tomer, but that wasn't Urtai. my card. <laughs> 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 I don't know. This is a yes for me. I think it should see more yeah. play. Like it doesn't see enough play. Three percent is like absurdly low. So yeah, yeah. agreed. Um. Whoa, that was pretty fast. <laughs> Three, <laughs> yes. All right, we'll move on. Uh, Phil, your Ooh. final card. You have one yeah, minute. One's... Good luck. Starting okay. right now. So everybody hates being having friends and stuff. Is it... <laughs> so... I hate having <laughs> friends. <laughs> so here's a card that is super niche, but a lot of archetypes fulfill that, that niche. It's called Overburden. Two mana, one in a blue enchantment. Whenever a player puts a creature card on, into play, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, that player returns a land they control into their hand. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield... <laughs> The controller picks up maybe an MDFC land or a channel land, or you just don't play any creatures and you absolutely torment the table with this and your opponent wants to punish you, but they have to play creatures to attack you with. It is absolutely brutal, but at two mana, I mean, at some point, you just gotta appreciate the power of this. If your deck can support this or even synergizes with this through, like, MDFCs or landfall, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> give it... <clears throat> a shot. One second. Nice. Yeah, it seems to be a pretty good. Uh, I, I'm not going to play it. I don't want this you to is... hate me, but it seems wow. powerful. <laughs> this is a card that's going to get you killed, Phil. Like, you have to. You have to have such a such an anti dying deck for this to work because you're going to be arch enemy for start collective to finish. restraint as well. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Phil, your your cards have kind of built a stacks deck. Right? Yeah. Like, 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 are, you, are you sure? And I was just playing like five color stacks, Phil. Like. Yeah, <laughs> like I I also love this card, and that's because I play this card in my Alela like <laughs> well, of course this you is, do this is an of easy no do, this is the fastest right. no of my life <laughs> no like I, I I took I took it out of my Alela deck when I accidentally made too many tokens. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and then oh. I just started bouncing on things. <laughs> like no, no, but this this is legitimately a stacks piece. Yeah, right. Like yeah. this is this is for sure a stacks piece. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I think that it's nice because it it's you know this way people aren't upset. It's fair. It happens to you too. Although you usually don't play creatures. So oh, this works uh, well for Layla, by the way. I, I'm sad to tell you because I, you're going to control people. Yeah. It, but so whenever a player puts a non-token creature on the battlefield. So if you make like, fear as a filet, that's uh, fine. Oh, great. I can keep it back in. Wow, but the thing that's here is, I, better than I realized. <laughs> this card itself is just, yeah, like, it's solid. It's a solid card. I love this. It got a riot. Uh, let me I, see uh, how many decks played. Uh, it is in very low amount of decks. Like 0%. And it's probably yeah, because people What's like friends. Score? Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I could bring myself to play this. I guess if I could, like... <laughs> 
if my deck synergized with it, I like the picking up MDFC's argument. I think that's actually really powerful. Maybe if I was some sort of landfall deck, if I had some way to take advantage of replaying my lands, maybe I could justify it. But wow, this card is really is going to make you lose friends and make everyone hate you. This is the epitome of like... We, uh, I don't have enchantment removal, so I guess I have to kill Phil, like because I don't yeah. want to deal with this overburden. So I feel like it does just get you killed, and it makes everyone mad. Um, How you gonna swing through Phil's no, propaganda effect? I can't. Effects. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't but buy. It's too. It's you basically too mean. have it's too all mean. three opponents pooling their resources to kill you. I don't even think that <clears> it's <throat> that effective. Like if you want to win, yeah, they could be united. But what are they gonna do? Power. <laughs> Is this the last card? It's my last it's card. It's last card, Tomer. Make it good. All right. Let's kick it off. One minute left. So starting now. It's not going to be Tails End because that would be too easy. Baby, it's Fade Away time. All right. This three mana sorcery says for each creature, that creature's controller pays one or sacrifices a permanent. So this is this right here, folks, is the mono blue board wipe that you of your dreams and it was printed years ago zero percent on edh track only two thousand decks are running it those are the enlightened ones my friends this one your, your opponents are all on creatures you're on not you don't have to pay anything they have to sacrifice basically half their board it's amazing they're on tokens well boom tokens be gone and it's three mana you know what else is three mana board wipes basically nothing like just like a toxic deluge you know toxic deluge one of the best board wipes in the format well this fade away it's three mana and it's in blue the color that doesn't usually have board wipes it is so good Mwah. i don't even need six more seconds i can just stop it there mic drop tomer right. are you the only reason why this is registered on the EDH track <laughs> i feel like you're the <laughs> only uh, All like you are in play of those decks <laughs> yeah. <is>. tomer <laughs> is like individually trying track. to spike this himself <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is so bad, Tomer. I like I, even time, I, I even, would, every I time I cast it, I get you guys. I don't know why. What? You're no, that that is just when? Not I was true. gonna say when you maybe cast? I've seen it work once, maybe. The thing is no, no, it, no. it lets you sack any permanent. So most of the time you cast it and someone has creatures and they're like, Oh, I got ten lands, I'll sack it, or I got a treasure token, I'll sack okay, it. Okay, you lost all your lands for oh, they have mana. mana board wipe. It's great. Or they have mana, or they have have mana that's also possible back it up with an so, either rise or something and they're like oh. so my problem with this is when i first heard you uh, talk about this card i actually did include it in a deck and it was jing ataxias and i fired it off in a great moment and it got copied by Jin, and it did basically nothing <laughs> it is just <laughs> so it sounds cool like reading it i really was thought well if you fire it off in the right moment but <laughs> Even doubled up, it did nothing. <laughs> to be fair, it's, it's not too good to double it up. Right? There was something. It's it was just not way good the first time. I it's, not, it's not good the yeah. second and time. And I never seen like it promise. perform good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I'll catch you. I'll catch you next it time. It is funny. Oh, really? I will give you a full another five minutes to tell me on this card <laughs> because, like... <laughs> How, dude? Like, I am so at a lot. Why do you love this card? I, I have to believe it's meme value. There is yeah. no way you love this card other than you're doubling down on the meme. Dude, this card is so bad. Phil, it you can copy like this 30 every times. Time when it would do the same thing the, as it would the I, first time. It's 50% gotta be of the time troll, right? it works every time. It's right? got to it's it's gotta just be Tomer trolling. There's no way he loves this card as much as he thinks. It's a blue toxic deluge. It's, Come on. You, oh you could literally play the whatever the new Teferi Zelfir I cast wipe away. Ooh. <laughs> it leaves it's creatures, sad. right? It's it does. It leaves two twos. This leaves nothing. Uh, Overburden nice. leaves creatures as well. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. Uh, I mean, you might have been able you know to sell me on Floodgate, but Fade away give, is you just know what? Hear me out. <laughs> wait, wait. Step too far. Wait, hear me out. Hear me out. You first. <laughs> First, they play Overburden, right? Yeah. So now they don't have any lands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. First, first, you Armageddon, and then you can fade away, and then you got them. First, first <laughs> you <laughs> Overburden. You needed a gin. Then you Winter Orb, and then you fade away. Tomer, I'm gonna. 
<laughs> I'm gonna give you a soft yes because it's so bad that I feel bad saying, <laughs> hey, like you know what I mean. It's like I'm <laughs> gonna commit to the meme now. You you sold me because at this point you're trolling, and I'm gonna go with it because it's just I, so funny. I would put another basic land in my deck over this, and I hate playing basic lands. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Do you actually, he does actually play it, but has it ever actually been good for you? I've seen you play it many times. Has it ever actually been it's good? It's been a bomb. What are you talking about? No, like le legitim legitimately. I'm pretty sure I've won a Commander Clash off this. No. You all sacrifice like five lands and then I get you and then I wipe I wipe the board of creatures and then like, boom, I made you sacrifice five lands for three mana. With a sorcery that costs it like reads a quarter. Somewhat better no, than I guess no, it actually performs no. somehow. And then if you copy it, oh my god, I should run, I should run into the Yeah, and it doesn't read all that. Tomer, great. Tomer, Tomer sold himself on it. Tomer, no. I know, but then you guaranteed <laughs> a board wipe. No. Isn't that what you wanted? That sounds like so much effort. Uh huh. You gotta have a gin okay. to make it work. <laughs> Just cataclysm me, no, dude. I can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll all see. You'll Tomer, all see. I would, al I, I would allow this as a proxy for any other card. <laughs> like, like, My next blue deck, fade away. I don't even care no, what the, the, the rest problem of the deck is. No, the problem with copying it, fade away. you can just sacrifice the this creatures the for the first copy. This is the hardest thing of the day for me. Not <laughs> even close. Wait, there was, we just talked about overburden. So, yeah. You'd say no overburden. <laughs> I would, play, I would play Overburden in every deck for the next year before I played Fade Away once. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So another day. Uh, next year. Next year, I'll get you with the Fade Away. You'll see. We'll bring it back. Um, but that will wrap it up. We did uh, 12 cards, and we all, we all discussed them. But let's hear from the community. What do you think about the cards that we brought to the table do you think we, uh, you, would you give it a yes or would you give it a no? Would you dis disagree with the, what the majority said here? And why do you think Fade Away is being so maligned by the rest of the Clash crew? Let us know in the comments section below. <laughs> Ahead of its time, exactly. Just Armageddon, it's fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, let us know what you think in the comments section below. And we'll be back next week with, I don't know what the podcast will be, but we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, bye.